You see this girl, she's sitting here, she doesn't look glad. She just got to America, she looks rather sad. She doesn't speak her English well, but that can be changed. If she doesn't learn her grammar, I'll look really drained. So tell us and you chew what we can do for you. You need some help and going to prepare some lessons for you. So come along with us and don't you cry or fuss. You need to learn some grammar, so learn it from us. What does this thing do? It doesn't make sense. It's not a verb. Then this drama intends. Is it a subject? I guess it could be. This stuff is tricky. It ends in ing. Why am I to do? I don't have a clue. Yeah. It's a verbal. Tricky, yes, but it's a verbal. Classify in one of three ways. Here we go. <laughs> Should I be scared? <laughs> First there is a gerund ing. That isn't quite so bad now, don't you see? It can be a subject or maybe a direct object. <laughs> For example, I like swimming. It's the object, yeah! Then there is a participle which can be acting as an adjective with ed or ing. For example, soaring high, the frisbee came her way. Now we reach the end, there's just one more. Instead of soaring, you can say to soar. That would mean it's not a gerund or a participle, so we call it an infinitive. Now you've learned the verbal, so don't fret. They're pretty easy and I'd almost bet. You will be using them your whole life long. You know, Enya, a verb not only conveys action, it also has a voice. Active and passive voice. Active voice is usually preferred because the subject is acting. It gives the sentence life. For example, David Beckham kicked the ball. In passive voice, the performer of the action becomes the object. It doesn't act, but is acted upon. For example, the ball was kicked by David Beckham. Which do you think is better? David Beckham kicked the ball? 